Hey guys, this is Rob, doing some more reactions. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And today, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing some more uh, classical music reactions. Like I, if you've seen on my channel, I play violin and viola, and I've uh, been a long time classical music player and fan. And uh, since we've done a lot of like pop music and, and rock and some rap and a whole bunch of random other stuff on the channel, I thought I'd dive into a little bit of classical stuff of anybody who cared to listen. Um, Claude Debussy was kind of late 1800s, early 1900s, and um, absolutely fantastic composer. And uh, a lot of his stuff, you'll, you'll kind of hear that it's very kind of dreamlike. Uh, his stuff, especially this tune, uh, is not very similar to uh, like Mozart and Bach. Their stuff is very structured with a lot of like sections and um, kind of a form. And but a lot of his songs ha are very flowy and like a you know kind of moving from one thing to another and very dreamlike uh, or clouds or you know there's a lot of ways to describe it but um this song uh, Claire de Lune I believe was originally a piano piece if you guys can uh correct me on that if I'm wrong but uh but somebody uh or him or somebody wrote out a really fantastic uh um orchestra version of it and it's um it's just probably uh, it, it really it really makes me laugh when a lot of people want to uh, talk about like you know uh, one uh, one guy I talked to was talking about uh, oh Tennessee Waltz oh man that's one of the most beautiful songs ever made or they'll talk about some song and I'm like I don't know have you ever heard of Claire de Lune like th this is to me one of the maybe top three most beautiful songs I've ever heard anyways and uh, one of my my favorite tunes that I've ever heard and so um, it's just absolutely gorgeous and so let's let's listen to a little bit of this they they don't make stuff like this anymore. I've never really heard of this orchestra either. Um, it's a really nice, uh, really nice auditorium. bottom note. You can hear how warm that clarinet sound is. He was very much into tone. Uh, Debussy was you can uh, if you saw they had mutes on uh, if you don't know what a mute is it just kind of it makes the sound a little bit darker and warmer um, instead of so so pop like especially for the E string instead of so bright on the violins and um, this song I've played this song in orchestra before in college and this is a very difficult song to play because most songs you know they have a they have like a, a beat that's just driving and then maybe they'll slow down to another beat that, that, and then they're back into a beat. Well, this one is very like flowy. You'll, you'll kind of see everybody kind of come in and out and it's probably a very difficult song to conduct because it's just kind of, you, you have to kind of, you have to really be listening and kind of flow with the whole orchestra and it's, it's a very difficult song to play rhythm wise. A lot of rubato and retards, slow down speed, slow down speed. You can hear it's just comes. And
here it kind of pushes a little bit. Yeah, he didn't push that much. You know, when you have a song like this, there's a lot of interpretation. You can tell that it's it's a bunch of like it's a bunch of phrases, and and you know they they go go go, and then they do a slow down, and then the next section go go go, and then slow down. It's like go slow go slow, and uh, there uh, when we played it, I think we really pushed really hard right there volume wise, but they didn't really pound on that big note. Um, so that's interesting. That's a good chord. Wow, what a song. So you can tell that, that uh, chord-wise, too, as, as musicians, um, a lot of... Uh that explains. So a lot of rock tunes use use and country tunes or whatever use very basic chords. So for example, they might use three notes to a chord. Well, Debussy stuff. I mean, you could tell how complex that was. He's using five, six notes to a chord sometimes, and and so. For example, he's displacing that out through the whole orchestra, right? So if it's like a D chord or something, like the cellos and the bass might have the actual D, and then violas have F sharp, and the clarinets have the E, and then somebody else is doing the A, and like, you know, each, it's spread out through the flutes and the trombones what and the horn players and whatever, and uh, so you can tell just a very complicated song, uh, with the touch of everything too, you can tell that you know uh, fourth grade players just can't play this. It's not a thing, right? You you have to have an incredible amount of bow control and an incredible amount of uh, of touch, and also you you kind of, there there is something to be said about life experience too to be able to because there's there's one thing to be able to technically be able to like with the technique of the a, a song like this but there's also this kind of, you can tell how emotional that song was and if you don't have kind of an emotional component to it or an ability to 
some somehow understand pain or whatever you know then then it's never going to kind of come out in your music and that's another reason why they would have adults do this is because they have some more life experience but uh so this music is is what's called impressionistic music and it was this this like it, it coincided with the again the impressionist kind of art uh art scene too and it's sort of you know the you know, it started in sort of different years, but but it was romantic started romantic era started in like eighteen twenty with the death of Beethoven, and then went up all the way to, you know, like Stravinsky uh, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, kind of nineteen teens basically is when they sort of said that that started contemporary, and this is sort of late. Uh, this kind of era is sort of late romantic, so something like night about nineteen hundred ish. Um, sort of around there is when a song like this would have come out and just absolutely beautiful. I, I think that's one of the most beautiful songs in history. I, I just don't know how you get much better than that. So um, the piano version is very neat as well. And, and what I mean, what I meant by uh, that, obviously Debussy wrote the song, but, but he, uh, a lot of times people use different arrangements of things. So I didn't know exactly what the arrangement of this was, but, um, but uh just fantastic orchestra is fantastic too they they destroyed that song so um anyway that's a little bit about wc and uh, i'm gonna do some more of these uh, classical reactions so if you like this uh, stick around i'll do some more of them so uh all right take it easy guys see you later <laughs>